Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. I mentioned yesterday that OpenSSL announced a critical patch for this coming uh, Tuesday. The patch will affect OpenSSL version 3.0. So today I started a diary with a list of different Linux distributions and what OpenSSL versions they include by default. As a rule of thumb, uh, you will likely find OpenSSL on Linux distributions released over the last uh, two years. So for example, Ubuntu 2004 still has OpenSL 1.1.1, but the latest Ubuntu 22.04, that one has OpenSL 3.0. But note that copies of OpenSSL may also be installed uh, later, sort of as additional updates or uh, as part of other software. Mac OS is a little bit uh, tricky here. It comes by default with uh, Libre SSL, so not with OpenSSL, but OpenSSL uh, may then be installed via Mac ports or Homebrew, or again, will be included in other software that you may be installing. I will keep things updated and the list sort of should expand a little bit over the weekend. If you find any omissions, uh, please send them to me. And Apple today released updates for iOS and iPad OS 15. Remember the latest version is 16 and the latest version did receive updates earlier this week that included a fix for a zero day vulnerability. These updates for iPad OS and iOS 15 are now including these same security fixes, including the fix for a CVE 2022-42 827, which is the vulnerability that's already being exploited. 360 NetLab reports about the Foggia botnet, as they call it, and that it now reached a complete firepower of one terabit per second. The this botnet is being used to launch distributed denial of service attacks and 360 NetLab has first seen this botnet around April, but since then it sort of has observed it being upgraded and the botnet itself growing. They are now calling the current version a version 4. The denial of service attacks are then being used to extort uh, companies. Uh, now, the tricky part here, of course, is how do you notify a company that is under denial of service attack, in particular denial of service attack of this scale? Of course, uh, their infrastructure is probably not really all that available. Well, the latest trick that the Foggia botnet added was to actually include the ransomware demand as part of the packet payload. Not sure if uh, analysts will be uh, seeing this uh, given the flood of packets and everything, but the interesting trick, I've certainly seen similar things like this before. Also remember in the past when we sort of had these groups launch uh, these denial of service attacks for ransom, we often had all sort of copycats that were claiming to be the particular group and then basically were asking for ransom without actually having the ability to follow through with uh, the uh, particular denial of service attack. NetLab360 counted about 60,000 active bots as part of the network. They're controlled by 42 different command control domains, but uh, these command control domains are not using regular domain names. They're using a system that is uh, called OpenNIC. It's a separate system of a name servers that's sort of not under the normal root name servers. So they're using, for example, top level domains as .libre and such. So if you're trying to resolve these uh, host names in in your own normal DNS server, well, uh, that'll fail. You have to use the specific open NIC and uh, name servers. In the show notes, uh, you'll find two links for this story. One is a news article that has a good summary of this uh, by Bleeping Computer. Uh, that article is in English. The original article by NetLab uh, 360 is in Chinese. I'll also link to it. 
Google Translate does a reasonable job in uh, translating it. And it has a ton more additional detail about how this botnet operates. Well, and uh, this is it uh, for today. Thanks again for listening. And as always, uh, subscribe uh, to this podcast. Leave me a good review in the podcast app of your choice. And certainly if you have any complaints, issues, uh, please let me know. I recently implemented uh, the uh, Cloudflare turnstile for our comment form because we've got a ton of spam and I looked for uh, different ways to sort of reduce that somewhat. Heard about uh, some false positives. If you can't use the comment form, would love to hear about it. Of course, that can be a little bit uh, tricky if you can't use the comment form, but Slack uh, should work as a platform that uh, you can uh, reach me with. Well, that's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.